Hello and welcome to my Python basic course using Cloudsway learning management system. This is Joseph Simitson. Okay, in the previous video, we had some information about introduction to Python, as you can remember. In this video, in this tutorial series, I'm gonna show you format and style of coding. Let's dive into this topic. Okay, we have several subtopics here and a quiz is here. Check yourself. And let's start with the first one and very quickly get familiar with what is PEP8 conventions. Yes, PEP8 conventions, uh, the PEP stands for Python and en Enhancement Proposal. It's a coding convention, as you can imagine. It makes your code more readable, easy to understand, and make it standardized standardize sorry so it is a uh, a conventional guide okay the main idea of the pep8 is to use the same code style for all python projects as if they were written by the same programmer right and we have a that's practice tests in the next step but i'm gonna skip it and go to the next topic, if you uh, want to do this last practice, you can enroll to Clarisway Learning Management System in any cohort. Okay, let's have some PEP8 rules here. Yes, while our codes getting much more aligned, have much more lines, so we have to limit our characters. In one line, we should be limited to the length of the codes, the length of the characters should be limited to uh, 72 characters. It is a conventional rule not an obligatory, of course. This is the main point. If you exceed the 72, 72 character, which means if you use, for example, 100 characters in one line, so your code will work and doesn't give you any error, but it is a conventional rule that you should, you should do. You should be inside the frame. And the second one, the most important PEP8 rules is using white spaces and the indentation method. Uh, so let's have some examples here and good and bad examples. You don't need to family with or, or know the main, uh, the main syntax, what is going on here, what is the meaning of spam, etc. You don't need to know that. Just uh, I want you to focus on uh, the matter here, the white spaces here. So as you can see, this is a bad example. After a parenthesis, inside the parenthesis, before and after any character, don't put any space. This is a bad example. You don't need to put space here here before and after parentheses. And these are a good example. As you can see, no space after and before any parentheses, square brackets or curly braces or normal parentheses. This is the first one. And let's take a look at the second one. Between a trailing comma and a following close parentheses, you should not put any space. As you can see, if you put a comma, 
and a nothing before the parentheses closing. These are the bad examples and you should uh, write something like that without any spaces here. Okay, the next example is immediately before a comma or semicolon or column. Okay, and as you can see uh, here, a comma before a comma and before a semicolon or before a column, as you can see, uh, we don't need to put a, a additional space here. As you can see, these are uh, bad examples here, here, and here, and here. Okay, these are conventional puppet rules. And the next one that I want you to learn about white spaces is something like that. After a function name and before its parentheses, there should be not any space. This is the good example. We don't put any space before the parentheses, opening the parentheses. Yes, and the last one, the last one, as you can see, uh, you don't need to put the aligning right or left in the, in the table. As you can see, uh, the, the last line, long, it's long, uh, when we compare to the previous one, and there are uh, spaces, additional spaces, and uh, the user, uh, as we can see, the user try to align all the characters, uh, characters to the right side, but this is a bad example. Just put the one space after and before the operator, okay? This is the good example. You don't need to uh, align it to the right or left. Yeah. And the last thing that uh, I'm gonna mention in this video uh, is that always surround the binary operators with a single space on either side. Okay. As you can see, all these one, uh, this one, this one, all this one. If we use all this operator in our uh, program flow, we have to put a single space before and after this operator. This, uh, this rules makes our code more readable. Okay, more readable. So let's jump to the next topic. And let's see what is the next topic here. Okay, comments and doxy drink. Uh, I want you to touch the comments first. What is the comments? Yes, the comments is uh, very important actually in, 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 in programming, any programming language. So uh, when writing a program, uh, you will need to add explanatory notes to others or even yourself. The longer you write lines, the better you will understand the necessity of this, I think. We can add these explanatory notes to our programs as commands, okay? So commands are used to explain code. For example, uh, this is, let me zoom in. This is a single line command. And we put we put a hash character at the beginning of the line, as in this input. And after that, the subsequent characters, uh, subsequent characters are considered as uh, comment, right? And Python does nothing. Python does nothing. This is an inline, inline command. We call it inline command. And uh, as you can see in this, in this line, we have a code block here. Sorry. 
we have a code block here. And after that, we put two spaces here and a hash corrector and one space after the hash corrector and our command. This is how we do that. This is an inline command. This is inline command. And after that, this is the multi-line command. And of course, if we, if we have several lines, I mean a long command, we can divide our commands into multiple lines and do it in several lines, in separate lines. And each line should start with the hash character. Okay, that's all for today. See you on the next lesson. Goodbye.